Welcome. This is Amerik Azevedo. For the past two and a half years, I've been doing a course entitled Time, Money, and Love in the Age of Technology over here at UC Berkeley. And very recently, I've taken up the practice of doing micro lectures in one of my big computer classes uh, using YouTube as a way of uh, communicating with students and others who are interested in some of the ideas that are flying by. Production values are very funky. I merely upload these uh, lecturettes uh, into uh, YouTube and uh, we uh, talk and think about these things in real time and sometimes online using common spaces and other things. Uh, in fact, this uh, kind of activity is an example of the stuff we address in Time, Money, and Love in the Age of Technology. I refer to it as time this placement. We, uh, we put an image out into the cyber digital space and find ourselves uh, not here but somewhere else and somewhere else is here and not only that but the then and past also get disconnected from each other so space and time and or space-time is no longer fused in the same point together with a group of people. But at the same time, we can redefine and understand a new kind of being together that hasn't existed before in the past in any way, like it has become the past uh, two decades in the history of humanity. And I suspect that this process is going to get more intense as what I referred to as telepresence affects the sense of here and there and uh, we get a feeling for being together more. YouTube for instance provides a phenomenal uh, connection between uh, probably millions of people who never would see or know of each other and builds a uh, global culture uh, again in ways we've never seen before. So uh, time, money and love in the age of technology why those three categories? Uh, well, I thought about it for many years, and it just seemed to come down to three categories as a way to begin to get a handle on talking about fundamental problems. Here's what I usually say. If you have a lot of time, it might be li likely that you, you don't have a lot of money, uh, but you might be able to have a lot of love. But again, if you have not very much money because you have a lot of free time, uh, the, many people will exclude you from their lives just from that alone. If you have lots of money um, and are focused totally on making money, you may not have time for the relationships and quality of relationships in your life to have real love. In fact, some people who have a lot of money don't know who loves them anymore because many people are approaching them because they're rich and no other reason other than that. If you have lots of love in your life, uh, time and money maybe don't become so important an issue. Uh, it, it's a different kind of uh, thing. Uh, again, sometimes people say, well, I have lots of love, but I have no money, and I wish I had money, and I have lots of love, but I don't have any time because I'm too busy um, in uh, communicating with friends and relatives uh, and loved ones, and, and that takes up all my time and also makes it impossible for me to make money successfully. So I like to suggest that there's kind of a balance between time, money, and love, and that we can build a true wealth portfolio if we pay attention to it, and that perhaps that kind of thing is very important in the age of technology, where most of us in this world uh, live uh, in societies that uh, use money. Uh, but we also live in societies that don't use the technology wisely because our culture is deficient. And so we are suffering time poverty despite the fact that we have massive numbers of high-speed labor-saving devices in our hands, in our, on our hands, or, uh, that, we are that, that are accessible to us. And why is that? Why can we have time poverty in the midst of so much technological power? That is all for now. We'll take up that later in the next section.
Bye-bye.